Victor's Assembly Church is located along River Road at former Casino Cinema near Kenya Uniform Distributors. To give you offering, send through our in-person number 0722 712 -918. I want to welcome our online viewers, those are watching us on TV. Uh, we talked about how to maintain your shift, your supernatural shift. And we began on the law of confession. And we said we are what we say. If you speak, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Everybody's life is a, a product of their words. You are a product of what you say. What do you say about yourself? What do you say about life? Right now, everybody is saying the economy is hard. And they are saying the cost of well is a lot. But the righteous shall live by faith. What do they say? You are not going to confess that now fuel has gone up. I am going to leave my car at home. The same God that was providing when it was 90 shillings, he has no, he has not changed. He's still the same today and forevermore. However, wisdom is required. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, wisdom is required. That does not mean you live carelessly because anytime you see a shift in season, it's an awakening for you to shift the way you think, the way you walk, the way you talk. So in this time, it is time to sow into your destiny. My future is very great. My children shall be the best. My marriage is blessed. I am a fruitful person. Begin to confess. We also talked about the law of imagination. And we said we are what we imagine. This word of God can never be implanted in your life if you imagine evil of the Lord. Now whom one nine says, what do you imagine of the Lord? He shall make and bring to another end. Affliction shall not come a second time. So what happens if you, are ne if you have negativity towards God? And one way of knowing that you have negativity towards God is that when crisis come, you begin to question and complain. I this. But the Bible says that those that know God Every temptation, they know they believe because they have in their imagination captured that God is not a punisher of men. They have known he's too faithful to fail me. They will not ask God, where are you? Because they know he can never leave you. He can never forsake you. So you are imagination of God. It is time to modify what we imagine of him. God has not called you to suffer. Tell your neighbor, God has not called you to suffer. Tell them again, you are not a sufferer. You are a chosen generation. Preach to them. Help me preach to them. You are a royal priesthood. You are the apple of God's eye. Tell them your life is written on the hand of God. Tell them he watches over your foot. That you may never stumble. Tell them he lives in you. And you live in him. You are seated with Christ. In heavenly places. Far above principalities. And powers of darkness. No power can touch you. So imagine of those things. Stop imagining yourself done, tired, hopeless, even dead. It is time to begin to imagine I shall live long. Let me tell you, nobody gets what they want unless they see it first in their mind. Hello? You need to make your mind go on a journey. All the negativity you've been feeding your mind with, feed your mind with positivity. After all, whatever must be, must be. But you better go through what you're going through with a positive mentality. Oh, tell your neighbor, be positive about life. Oh, I have realized there are people that are just toxic to be around. What work called negative? What okay, can I? Suddenly you feel even your faith has been deflated. It is time to imagine well of yourself. And if you love yourself, disappear from such people. Hey, tell your neighbor, if you maintain negativity, I will run away from you. Why? What are you trying to do to guard your imagination? Because by the time you interact with me and you have a lot of negativity, even when I'm thinking, what do you think? What is wrong with you? I am still going the journey of negativity. But if I stay with somebody that will encourage me with a psalm, somebody that will tell me, ah, let's go to church. Somebody will say, atakama ni kugumu, yesu bado ni buwana. If you stay with such people, let me tell you, they will be the caleb of this generation. Even at Ata, you will be saying, give me my mountain. You are only 43, and right now you've already retired in your head. What retired is not your body. As a man thinketh, so is he. Forget about your biological clock. Eh? For some of us, the only problem you have is your age. Instead of seeing your age as a blessing, 
The age is speaking back to you like it's a curse. Do you know every year when you live, how much it takes heaven to keep you alive? Oh my God, can I get an amen in the house? Do you know how many angels are employed to watch over you by day and by night? And instead of seeing what God has done, you are just seeing age as a disadvantage. Why then is the scripture written that I was young and now I'm old? I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And I kind of saying, as my age is, so is my strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall march upon wings as eagles. They will run and never be weary. Then why is God renewing your strength if you can't appreciate Oh my God, every year that you jump another year, no matter what you have or you don't have, having another year is a blessing. Oh my God. And sometimes you think your biological clock is your disadvantage and it's your advantage. There are things that God cannot give you at a particular age because he knows if he gives you at 25, the enemies of your destiny that destroyed your father, they will be waiting for you, they will destroy you. So he will wait until they are tired and they are expired. Tell your neighbor, if you think I am delayed, it is only that the Lord is fighting a battle for me. When he is done, you will see me. Ha! Akimalizana na mimi utaona. Inaweza onekana kama ni sahauliwa kwa soko. Lakini mimi sija sahauliwa. Anatengeneza mambo. Dio nikifika, I will overtake her. I came to prophesy to somebody. You are overtaking in the name of Jesus. I say you are overtaking in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say, I am not delayed. I am overtaking in the name of Jesus. Sit with an overtaking grace in Jesus' name. So when people look at you, they think you're delayed. It is only because God knows that the heat tights and the color bites. And all the biters are on the way. So he will wait until you're 40. So that by the time you reach 40, they will not be there. They will say, hard, we've conquered them. Then they look at you, they wonder why you are happy. But they do not know because in your imagination, you know the dealings of God. You know he can never fail. You know he is never late. You know he's a promise keeper. You know he has not called the sons of Jacob to seeking in vain. Let that imagination be in you. That God is too faithful to fail and to begin with me. But the problem with you is that you have a script. You are not acting your life. Your life is reality show. The problem you have is at 22, I know I will meet Mr. X or Miss X. At 25, I'll buy my car. At 30, I'll have my home. At 32, I'll go to Dubai. Oh, the plans belong to a man, but it is God who gives the answer. As long as you are in God, your calendar is in his control. Can I get an amen in the house? You may plan your way, but it is God who signs. It is God who executes what you desire. The, our responsibility is present your desires to him and continue delighting in him. The rest leave it to him. He knows when you need a car. He knows when you need a house. He knows who is supposed to travel and who is supposed to be local here in Jerusalem. It doesn't matter whether in Jerusalem, Samaria or outer parts of the world. The purposes of God can never be delayed. I pray for a shift in your imagination. I pray for a shift in your imagination. I came to declare you can never fail. You can never fail. You can never be ignored. You are a city on a hill. Arise and shine for you are light, not darkness, but your light has and whose glory? The glory of the Lord. What is the glory doing? Rising. It is time to begin to say the glory is rising. Oh, the glory is rising. The glory is rising. Let your imagination be directed by the word of God. Tell your neighbor, grow above your feelings. Aha, I know you feel that way. But your feelings is not scripture. Rise above those feelings. I know you don't feel like praising this morning. But it is time to defy your feelings. I say I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. I will say of oh, the Lord. is my strength and my refuge. My God in whom I trust. Though the enemy come against me. The Lord shall arise. And so scatter the enemy seven directions. Many trust in chariots. Many trust in horses. But I will trust in the name of the Lord. What are you doing? Align your imagination with the word of God. Ask your neighbor, what do you imagine of God? Even as we speak right now, there are people who are saying, God, do you harvest where you have not sowed? In your head. God, you're asking me, what haven't I given you? I gave you my purity. 
I gave you my time, my time. What else do you want? Tell your neighbor he wants the whole package. Oh, you can tell God you can have the whole of me. Because once I give the whole of me to him, he gives me the whole of him. Hey. Each one of us believes in their boss that your boss will pay you the end of the month. But when it comes to God, we think he's, he reaps where he has not sowed. Tell anybody your reward is coming. But it will come as you imagine. That is why the Bible talks about the measure of 30, 60, and 100 based on your imagination. He who believes more gets more and more rewards. So it depends on which category you are in. Are you 30? Are you 60? Are you 100? So what is God looking at? The measurement of joy. The measurement of believing him. The measurement of excitement. That is why when you come into the presence of God, don't come casually. Tell your neighbor, don't come casually. Hit them on the shoulder and tell them, don't come casually here. You are coming to the God who sees destiny. You are coming to a God who created the earth. You are coming to a God who raised Lazarus from the dead. Your imagination should be the testimonies he has done. Oh, come on, look at his track record. Even when the Red Sea saw him, it fled. Ah! When Jordan saw him, it parted ways. When you imagine of him that way, you will be singing a song in the morning. You will be singing a song in the afternoon. You will be singing a song in the evening. The reason why the shouts of the enemy are loud is because your imagination of God is narrow. Tell your neighbor the reason why. You are discouraged. And your battle is bigger than your God. It's because what you imagine of God is very narrow, narrow, narrow. Tell them widen, widen, widen. We always say, Oh, to a chineke mudie. Oh, show me the size of your God. Oh, Agidiba. But the problem is, you will sing. But in your mind, he's a, he's a pyramid. Your God is pyramid. <laughs> Are you getting me? Your God is a dwarf. God is bigger than me. Oh. <laughs> the only place God has told us we test him is tithing. Any other place, your imagination of him determines your reward. Hey. Am I communicating here? So ask your neighbor, what do you imagine of the Lord? What do you imagine of him? In the first place, who, he never leaves. You are the one who left. Amen. See, he never leaves. It is us who leave. No, once you understand who God is, you know your place and his place. God is forever seated. You seated in heaven. Forever seated in heaven. Heaven is his throne eternally. And the earth is his foot too. He goes no for no safari. And second, he never sleeps, he never slumbers. So, kama kuna kitu ili kupita, si mungu alirara ni wewe. Sisikia mina, lakini ilikuwa ni mebeba. Amia jirani yako, mungu wangu harari. Wako anararaga. Yeah, you know, discouragement is based on how you imagine. You look at people, and then you copy paste, and you think God is like people. God is not like your enemies. God is not like the people who have maltreated you. God is sovereign and he remains the same. The other thing the law that I want to introduce now is the law of hunger. The law of hunger. Tell your neighbor hunger. Ama kwa kiswahili nja nja. I want you to know several things. One of the key things that when your hunger expires, the supernatural stops. Did you come to Melewa? Tumelewana? Ngaragu yako. Kiswahili na ito anje, jayako. Ikiisha. The supernatural stops there. Why do I say so? Because the Bible says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. God is interested when you are interested. Hallelujah in the house. God is interested if you are interested. The other thing that you need to know is that there are dimensions in the spirit that will only be exposed to the spiritual hungry. There are depths in God that only the spiritual hungry will be exposed to. 
That is why there are so many supernatural things recorded in the Bible. But they are for chosen people. They are not special or they are not handpicked by God because they are favorite. If you look at all of them, it's a level of hunger. The blind Bartimaeus, they tried to silence him. He refused. Lazarus, there was a Mary that was knocking on Jesus' door saying, you must visit my brother. He must raise up. Every encounter with God and every dimension in the spirit is always preceded by hunger. So how hungry are you for the supernatural shift or the things of God? And the more you are hungry, the more you realize you need more. Aristotle said, that he's a philosopher, that the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. Tell your neighbor for me, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. So hunger introduces you to more hunger. As you hunger for God, you realize, like after 50 hours, you realize you are hungering for prayer now. There is an appetite that has been created. You are hungering for the presence of God. You are asking, let them call for a hundred, I'll be here. Why? Because the more you enlarge your capacity, the more God will fill you. I also want you to understand that you can only experience the presence of God based on your hunger for him. God will not overshadow you with his presence if you are not interested. Because God is a jealous God and God is a God of vengeance. He will not trust his presence with anybody that does not value it. So your value determines how much more you look for God. If your need for God is little, you will look for him a little. But if your need for him is big, you will look for him in a bigger way. So I want us to see what are the things that will draw us to God to hunger for him. What is this hunger I'm talking about? What are these things that I'm talking about that we are qualifying as hunger? So in short, I want to define what is this hunger. Number one, it is to see God moving in your life. Where you decide, I have seen so much of me and so much of people, but I want to see the God written in the Bible moving in my life. How many are interested like me that you want to see the acts that you've seen in the Bible happening in your generation? If you're in agreement, shout amen. Number two, it is a cry for intimacy with your God. It is where you begin to say like David in Psalm 42 that my soul yearns for thee. My soul yearns for thee. My spirit yearns for thee. In a dry, as a deer panted after the water brook, so my soul panted after thee. Oh, you begin to seek for him because you know without him you can do nothing. Or like in Psalm 63 verse 1 where David was saying that, oh God, you are my God. I will seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Is So David is longing for refreshment, not from the physical water or maybe the physical food. He is desiring an intimacy with God. So when we talk about hunger, we are saying, what is your intimacy level? What is your intimacy level? How connected are you with God? If you are here and you feel, I need more of God. I need to be more intimate with him. Then your hunger is already activated. I pray that you will hunger for him all the days of your life. Number three, it is when, hunger is when you are tired of what you are seeing in your world. And you need to see the actualization of the power of God. You are tired of the things you have seen. And you want God to do more. The psalm is to write. I don't know if it's Psalm 78 or which psalm is that. That is saying that we have read of testimonies of what you have done. How you parted the waters. How you dried the Red Sea. Lord, do it in our generation. There is a place you reach and you are tired of how your family looks like. Eh? Are we communicating? Ask your neighbor for me, what are you tired of? Let it lead you to seek God. Yes, where you are tired of the state of things. You are tired of the way you keep losing money to right and left. You are tired of how you've maintained a business in the same level for five years. And you say, I am desiring to see God move in my life in a bigger way. If you are there, shout the loudest, amen. Ah, where you come to a place and say, I have moved around this mountain for too long. It is time to break camp and go to a higher level. Do I have people in the house who desire a higher level? Lift your hands and say, take me to a higher level, oh God. Somebody say, oh God, actualize your word in my world. 
It is when you desire that you have said that he will give us more than enough. You look at your business and you're living from hand to mouth. And you say, I am not staying here now. I am going to go deeper in God. I know what is this prosperity he has for the righteous. Ah, what is this that he has said? That he will give some 30, 60, and 100. That will drive you to want him to be manifested in your life. And the Bible says when you seek him, you shall find him. But only if you seek him with all your heart. Tell your neighbor, if you seek him with all your heart. Ah, come on, pinch them for me in a softer way and tell them if you seek him with all, underline all your heart. Say, my Lord, with everything within me, I'm going for you. When you're tired of seeing drunkenness, when you're tired of seeing calamity striking and nobody's challenging it, you decide, I am going for this. This must expire. Number four, as I finish. Rabagadaga. When you want to see the supernatural happening in your life, when you want to see God of impossibility, come and break impossibility. I know from where you come from, there are people that have told you it cannot be done. Am I speaking to real people here? There are people and situations that are looking at you and they are telling you we are here and we are not moving. Ah, but when you have hunger in you, you will begin to say, there is nothing you cannot do. Protocol breaker. There is nothing you cannot do, Jehovah overdo. I have tasted of your love. I have seen your mighty words. Mountain move on my love. The minute you sing that song, suddenly there is a desire to see the move of God. There is nothing that is impossible with God. We are the ones that live in the realm of the impossible. Munanisikia. Ambia jirani yako, wewe ndiyo nae ishi. Madunia ambayo mambo haiweze kani. Lakini mwamia ni wakati wakuhama. There is nothing that you need that God does not have. But ukweli ni kwamba hata patia kila mutu. Yule ambaye hako nanja, ndiyo atapewa. That is what the Bible says. He did not do many miracles in his hometown. But alipuenda kwa mataun zingine. Kwa sabu haku wa mamemzoea. Alifanya miujiza. Oh, let us come out of being familiar with God. Umeona matendo makuu ya mungu. Lakini kuna another level. Tell your neighbor there is another level. Let's rise up on our feet as we declare. Jehovah take me to another level. As you stand up on your feet. Begin to lift up your hand. And tell him Lord take me to another level. I desire to go to another level. I desire to go to another level. Maybe to you you need God to be manifested in your world. Kuna watu wanashina wakikuliza. Kama umeokoka mungu wako wako wako. Oh, that will lead you to hunger. Oh, there is a cry for intimacy. There is a cry to experience his presence in your world. Oh, there is also desire to see the impossible being done in your life. Lift up your voice and tell God, take me to another level. Take me to another level, God. I'm tired of where I am. Take me to another level. Are you sure you want another level? There is another level of singing. There is another level of ministry. There is another level of preaching. There is another level of academic excellence. There is another level of marital joy. Oh, there is always another level. Open up your mouth and say, any power that has contained me in my current level. I break free in the name of Jesus. Shout, I break free in the name of Jesus for seven times. One, two, three, four. Celebrate your freedom right now. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I can't hear you. Somebody declare, I refuse to remain the same. I refuse to remain the same. There is a higher level. There is another level. There is another glory. There is another favor. I sit in the realm of the spirit. Ah. are comfortable in heaven will wait until you are unsettled you can continue operating in your level until Jesus comes until there is a stirring until there is a restlessness because hunger is a stirring hunger is a restlessness hunger is a longing that cannot be satisfied by money the problem with most of us when little money comes it steals our hunger for God but I pray that in every time no money can take the place of God no husband can take the place of God no wife can take the place of God no job can take the place of God even kingdom service will not take the place of God my heart 
too long for you. Oh, as a deer pants for the water, so my soul longed after thee. Oh, pray that in your heart there will be a longing that nobody can satisfy. Oh, there is another level. Tell somebody there is another level. There is a oh, raba gaga gashota. Mami usi di danganya kuna level ingine. You think you are the best. There are other people that are in a higher level, and that leads me to point number five. What is this hunger we are talking about? It is when you have a prophetic word that has been hanging over your head from when you had it until now. It has never been fulfilled. Oh, I cannot tell you that word came to push you into God. We are the generation. Until our prophetic destiny is realized, which will end until Jesus comes, we are giving heaven no peace. Hatuta patia bingu amani, hatuta patia malaika amani, hatuta patia wanadamu amani. Lazima itimie vile ilivyoandi kwa juu yetu, vile manabii walinena juu yetu. Haita anguka. Let me tell you, you determine how fast prophecy will be fulfilled by your hunger, by your hunger, by your hunger, by your your hunger, by your hunger, I pray that your hunger will rise. Tell three people, I pray that your level of hunger will increase. In the third service, I will teach about what anger does to a man. But one thing about hunger is a hungry man is an angry man. There is an anger you receive, it is called righteous indignation. Ah, how can there be peace in this home? When witchcraft is prevailing, a hunger to see God exalted in your home. Raba Handi. Pray that God will enlarge your hunger. Let me tell you, there are so many prophetic words that have been fulfilled in you, well, that have been spoken over your life. But Timothy was told, learn how to wage warfare with the prophecies that have been spoken. Prophecy is given to provoke hunger. Tell your neighbor for me, pro prophecy. Is meant to provoke hunger. The, if you don't do anything about the prophecy, it will die and Jesus will be God. Did you come to Melewana? Ata hivi na hubiri ata niki prophesy. Nisema receive your car. Utasema amen. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. Na unatap. Then you go. Ten years down the line, you'll still be walking. And God will still be God. Unless you connect your hunger and align it with the prophecy. Father, you said that how I'm receiving my car. Who silver and gold is yours? Ah, you join the law of confession. I am already driving. Now you also go to practical faith because faith is substance of things hoped for. You go for driving school. Huh? Hello? Sinequel. And then the imagination. Begin to see the signpost on the road. I'll be driving. I'll be. Begin to imagine the car you will have. I, 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 I already know the chopper that God will give me. It is only very soon I'm going to Wilson and begin to study these choppers. Tell your neighbor the law of imagination. So what are you doing is that the prophecy, you are creating room for the prophecy. Oh, there is what God has spoken about you. But let me tell you, it will not get fulfilled if you are not hungry. Huh? The Bible says that, that they were looking for a city whose master and builder is... God. But they had to keep on walking. Tell you, but you have to keep on walking. When gine wetu tunapokiaka prophecy unasema nabia nenena, unaenda unalala. Let me tell you, activate that prophecy by prayer. Go on prayer and fasting. Give your seed faith here. Continue doing what you need to do. Eh? What are you doing? Is that you are enlarging your capacity so that when the blessing will come, it will not suffocate you. Eh eh. Tunaelewana. Kuna mafuta mungu waezi kukumuagiria. Kwa sababu anajua you are not ready for it. Hiyo kidogo umepokea. Inakufanyanga usikia kama utasikia shock. Eh? Anasema we gojea. Gojea until you build capacity. Let me tell you. Your capacity in the spirit is equal to the level of your hunger. We know you are hungry by how many services you attend per week. Hmm? We know you are hungry by how many church programs you register for. Because God is not found out there. He is found in his house first. Where two or three? By now, when you hunger, there is no way you will hunger for God. And God will lead you to the market without leading you to his house. That's what David said. I was glad when they said unto me. 
Let's go to the house of God. What is your, what is your interpretation of prayer and fasting? When we say the first three days of the, of the month we are praying, <laughs> on fourth, after we say we are done with, it shows you have no hunger. Let me tell you, there is that dimension of God seekers that God is raising in this house. You will not be left behind. Open up your mouth and say, Lord, increase my hunger. Open your mouth, open your mouth and pray. Lord, increase my hunger. Your desperation to see God moving. Are you contented where you are? Let me tell you, the younger you are, the more you should seek him. The more blessings you have, the more responsibility you have. That is why wise men still seek him. I can hear you. Is that a sincere, genuine cry of your heart? I want more of you. How easy is it for you to obey him? How easy is it for you to wait in his presence? Father, we ask of you today that you rekindle a fresh hunger for prayer. You rekindle a fresh hunger for fellowship. You rekindle a fresh fire for reading your word. That God, we may become the best that you want us to become. We cry for intimacy. We cry for the manifestation of your presence in our world. We pray that the impossibility breaker, break impossibility. We pray that Jehovah God that you may shift us from where we are. There are prophecies that are hanging over our heads. We cannot remain that way. Jehovah move in our favor. Move in our favor. Move in our favor. We desire a land whose builder and architect is you. Take us there. Take us there. Whatever has given us false rest in this world, we drop it in this service. We pray that Jehovah God we take up hunger for you. For you are all we need. In Jesus name. Bwana asifiwe sana. My name is Reverend Ruth Wamoyo on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter and on YouTube. All you need to do is just go to my page, like and follow me and to my YouTube channel, I'm Ruth Wamoyo. Just go there and hit the red subscribe button. You will receive the latest music, the sermons, the gorgeous woman show, divine encounter and all the services, even lunch hour services. God bless you as you do that.